Hey, hey there, YouTube. What's up? So it's Ascent here, and so I am just going to be talking today about the Huon um, H610 Pro drawing tablets. And so this is my first drawing tablet that I've ever owned. Um, and so I'm going to be using it for predominantly ZBrush, but also I'm going to be using it for Photoshop and potentially any applications that I could be using. Uh, any other applications I can be using, I will let you know. But uh, this is mostly going to be used for ZBrush, is what my plan is. So this is the box. On the back, you just get some pretty basic information. Um, so you have, yeah, recharge. It's a rechargeable pen. Um, it's a. Uh, it's not a screen tablet. It's just a flat tablet. So you just you draw on it. There's no screen. Um, it's not like the Cintiqs and a couple of the other ones that have the actual screen to them as well. I know Huon also sells some of the ones that have the LCD displays, but this is just the pad tablet. Uh, so it's 10 by 6 and a quarter inch uh, screen with 2048 pressure level sensitivity, which is pretty standard, a 5080 LPI resolution, 233 RPS report rate, and a 0 0.6 inch reading height. So, here we go. Uh, I'm not sure if I can do this one-handed actually. Give me one second here guys. I can do it one-handed, but yeah, so here's the case. So it's got a nice bit of uh, foam inside here, and that's just the top lid of it. And here is the actual drawing tablet itself. Uh, sorry, that's really blurry. There we go. So thank you for choosing Huon. I assume this is just like a little card thing. Is there anything actually inside of it? Oh, yes, there is. So you get like a little card. It gives you all the information about them and um, a QR code to their Facebook page. So here is the actual tablet itself. I don't know. There we go. If you lift the tab, it makes it a bit easier. I don't have any nails though. Again, I might have to be right back. Wait, just give me one second. Yeah, I'm just gonna have to be right back. Change just so that it's a bit easier to see. So here's the actual tablet itself. So we got a couple of buttons on the side here. Uh, I'm not sure how they will work out actually in ZBrush. I've never actually tried it. Um, but you got some rules at the top here. So you have uh, sizes up here. Uh, you have a nice little artist glove here. Oh, and it is two-fingered. Okay, I thought it was a single finger glove, but it is two-fingered. Um, so, put that off to the side for a second. You have a carrying case, looks like. So this is the Pro version. So this is the one from Amazon, the Pro version. Um, and so you have a case for that. And you have a little bit of accessories here. So you have the driver booklet, looks like, and the, oh, sorry, the driver's disc and the graphics manual, oh, sorry, the user manual. Um, generally speaking, when with Windows 10, this should be plug and play as far as I know, but I might be wrong. I'll let you know when I actually get into it. And then just in the side compartment here, we have what I would, yeah, so this is the charging cable for the pen. Uh, and then there's the pen just, there. Okay. Um, you have a little USB. This is a, I think it's a mini. Don't remember. It's the same as the PS3 controller. So if you have a PS3 controller cord, then you'll have one of those as well. Uh, little standy thing, looks like. Yeah, so it's a little stand. So it's a little weighted stand. So you can just rest the. I was gonna take it on the packaging actually. And I'm sorry, I'm right-handed. That's why I'm holding the I'm holding my phone with my right hand right now to take the video. That's why I apologize. It's pretty bad quality. Um. There we go. There's the pen. So we got two buttons on here. I assume that those are hot cable. The actual stylus itself. Decent sized uh, tip to it. Here, I'm just gonna put this lid back on, and that's how it fits on the charger. Oh, sorry, on the uh, on the stand. So the charger is actually at the bottom here, so it's weird. It works off of a. Um, I know this isn't proprietary because I've seen it before, but it's a very annoying charging standard because most it's very hard to find replacements for these. But yeah, so it just plugs into the bottom here. Like so, just like you would for a laptop cable, as you can imagine, and then it just charges like that. And you can actually just leave it on the stand while it's charging, I guess, or is it too heavy with the cable? When the cable's on fur, it shouldn't be too heavy to do that with, but there you go. So overall, uh, build quality-wise, it feels pretty pretty sturdy. Um, I guess the only thing left is to go see if it works inside a ZBrush. There you go. So I'm just here. And 
so today I'm just going to be doing a really quick review of the first ever graphics tablet that I bought, which is the Hu Huion, Huion, I'm not sure how to say the name of the company, but uh, H-U-I-O-N, H610 Pro. And so uh, I purchased this from Amazon for $79.99 on Prime Day, and uh, yeah, so in the box it includes the, uh, the pen stands uh, for the pen. The tablet itself, the carrying case for the tablet, it's just like a little baggy thing. Um, the USB cables for both the tablet and the pen to charge the pen, uh, the driver's disc and an artist glove. Um, there's not really much else that they could have included in here that would have been useful, so I think they did a good job with what you actually get for your money. Um, and yeah, so what I'm using this mostly for is for ZBrush and Photoshop. But I'll just explain, so all the programs that I use currently on my computer, I use ZBrush, Photoshop, Cinema 4D, Illustrator, Quixel Suite, and Fusion 360 for the most part. Um, Fusion 360 less so, I just started using that, but uh, yeah, so I'm going to be going over if you're using each of these programs where it's good, where it's bad, and if it's worth it for whichever of these programs you would be using. So I just kind of want to address as well what the video is that's going on in the background, so this is just a quick video. I didn't really have any uh, screen capture recording of me using the tablet and so I guess what I'm, I'm just using a quick speed art sort of style thing uh, in the background when I was on my vacation uh, using this so I did take it it is very portable you can it's fairly large I will say that much um, but you can definitely take it with you to use on the go and it worked out really well for the entire trip um, I'm really I was really impressed with it for all of the use especially since I was using it on a surface, I thought there'd be a bit of muddling around with the fact that obviously the surface itself has its own tablet sort of settings on it, but no, it worked out really well. So uh, yeah, that's just what you're watching in the background right now. So I figured out that stuff with the pros. So uh, for programs such as ZBrush, Photoshop, Illustrator, any brush-based programs using a pencil utensil apparatus, I don't know what you want to call this, but yeah, using the tablet itself for that those sorts of programs is really good. Um, because the pressure sensitivity adds a lot, gives you a lot more granular control generally. Uh, so in ZBrush, yeah, it helps to add a lot more variation. It's um, any of the extrusions made by any of your brushes are a lot more accurate, and again, you have more granular control of the model and the placement of the brush strokes. Um, for Photoshop, same sort of thing. The big thing generally overall is that you get the pressure sensitivity on the fly, so you can have a lot more variation generally within your brush strokes. Um, anything that you're doing. With Photoshop, if you need to have more granular control of, for example, the colorizing stuff that I've been doing, I've been using the graphics tablet for that because it's a lot more accurate for getting in close to where you need to paint over certain areas uh, to add the color into the uh, scene. So yeah, and then for Illustrator, this is the biggest one. If you if you have Illustrator, having a graphics tablet is invaluable. It's unreal how good the tapering effects are for making logos. Um, they're huge in logo design and it's really helpful to give it a lot more of an authentic true to paper sort of feel. Uh, so if you, I would say if you have, if you're using any th of these three programs um, for as a major part of your workflow, I would say that it's probably worth the cost to generally pick up a graphics tablet and I would highly recommend this one. This one is really good. Um, and I've been really enjoying it so far. Now for the more pessimistic side of this review, um, the cons of having, I don't know if it's a graphics tablet in general or if it's just this particular graphics tablet, but my god, if you are doing anything that requires a lot of um, UI, so if you're doing anything with Cinema 4D for example, or if you're using anything like Fusion 360 where you have CADs uh, or boxed modeling such as in Maya, or in Fusion 360 or in Cinema 4D, any of these sorts of programs where you're gonna be messing around a lot with in menus, my lord is it terrible for that. Um, there's really bad uh, controls for where it goes into double clicking a lot of the times. Uh, there's issues if you're trying to edit parameters, so if you're trying to change a certain value of centimeters or whatever it is um, within a menu, it is awful for it. Cinema 4D has its own setting that you have to set for if you're going to be using a graphics tablet and even with that it's just terrible. Um, same with Fusion 360, it's really bad for trying to do that sort of stuff. It's much easier to do with a mouse, especially since CAD drawings are supposed to be accurate, so you're going to have to tinker around with the parameters anyways. Um, and like I said before, it's terrible for doing that. And box modeling, is, the tablet and pen for box modeling is just a complete waste of time. Um, it's much easier to use a mouse for these sorts of things and then your number pad for typing in specific amounts of whatever you need in there. So 
I would say if you're going to be using any of these three programs as your main workflow drivers, it's not necessarily worth it unless you're going to be using any of the other uh, softwares or anything like um, UV mapping and that sort of stuff. So if you're going to be doing Maya as well, I guess if you're going to be doing UV mapping, then it might be worth it to look at one of these. Um, but besides that, if you're just using one of these three programs or using any other sort of um, program, so if you're using like... Uh, I'm trying to think of some other box modeling programs none of them are coming to mind but if you use like google sketchup that sort of stuff like it's it's really not worth it to pick up graphics tablets for any of those sorts of programs it's really more for um any programs that use brushes as their main form of uh creative medium i guess so kind of wrapping up this video uh like i said before i do definitely recommend this tablet especially for what else you have on the market around the same sort of price bracket so the closest thing that you have is the intuos uh, let me get the exact name on here uh the the wacom intuos draw graphics tablet which is just it's 104 dollars um on amazon right now uh i have heard great things about wacom but i do feel like you are paying for the name uh, the pressure sensitivity is supposed to be more accurate, but to be honest with you, this one has a 2048 pressure sensitivity, and that's been enough for me. Uh, if you're doing professional work, then maybe you want to look into something like that, but if you're doing professional work anyways, generally a lot of people want to do the, uh, the graphics tablets that are the screens themselves, um, which I've heard are a lot better. I haven't, the only thing that I've again had a chance to try that out with was uh, the Surface, and the Surface at the time had a lot of glitches to go on with a lot of the programs I was using so I uh, from my personal experience I've found that I don't really like on-screen tablets I prefer the pen tablets but um, yeah I guess to end off this video is kind of a yes or no I would say yes this is a really good beginner graphics tablet uh, the only thing that I will say about this is that it is quite large the one that I've linked down below it's it really does it takes up about the same amount of space as a keyboard so you do have to have either a big desk uh, or some way of accommodating that a small side table or something to be able to put it on or just a really long desk um, So that would be another one of those kind of cons thing or not necessarily a con. I don't know for me I like it because um, In the settings itself the big thing as well is that I work at 21 by 9 for my main monitors aspect ratio which is just a pain in the ass a lot of the times for um, support across different programs that sort of stuff and this tablet supports it beautifully uh, it's it's perfectly linear like when i'm messing around with stuff um, the corners are exactly where the corners are on my screen uh, if i want to exit out of a program or anything like that it is exactly in the top right hand corner and there are some settings you have to tool around with to get that to work but it does work beautifully once you get it to work so um it's a big plus if you are working in 21 by 9 it works really well for that and uh yeah so if you guys have any other questions uh be sure to give me a shout down below and I will try and answer as many as I can. If you're watching this on Amazon, be sure to check out the YouTube channel if you want to comment down below and ask me any questions. Um, and if you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to check out some of my other videos that I've done, uh, any of the work that I've done outside of Cinema 4D, and uh, a couple other things has all been done with this tablet if you want to see it in action. Um, and yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully this was helpful. And if it was, then hopefully I'll see you next one.